Game Captain. I'm Lynn. And today we're going to be reviewing and talking about another installment in the adventure game series, Discover the Story. This one is Monochrome Inc. Now, first off, I'd like to thank uh, Thames and Cosmos for sending us the, the two copies of the adventure game series that they sent us. They sent us this one, and they also sent us uh, The Dungeon, which we've already reviewed. Uh, now, this is a newer series of games by Thames and Cosmos that are meant to mimic the style of old uh, computer point-click adventure games like uh, Zork Grand Inquisitor or um, uh, King's Quest, things like that from way, way back in the day. If you're as old as we are, you'll remember those. Uh, so this game was designed by Phil Walker Harding and Matthew Dunstan. I'm going to show that there. Uh, it was published by Cosmos, and it's for one to four players, ages 16 and up, and it has three sessions on, at 90 minutes each. So let's uh, let's start there. Now, um, one to four players, each player gets to have a character. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, the more players you have, the more... Because characters actually get different options of stuff they can do, just like, like in the other one. Mm -hmm. So more players means more options, depending on which character is doing which task. So that is good. I definitely felt uh, uh, like uh, probably we played this at two, but I would I would say that probably three might be better because you have a, uh, more options in at that point. What do you think? Well, I think if if you're playing it by yourself, you get two characters. Oh, is that so, a thing? Yes, it's in the rules. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's a really good idea. Now the sixteen and up. Uh, this is not because of difficulty. This is because of theming. Um, I think kids could take it, but whatever. Well, you could have taken it as a kid. <laughs> but there's, I mean, there's there's some dark uh, stuff in here. And you have some options to do some dark stuff. Mm -hmm. Including, like, you know, in regards to dark stuff in here, we're talking about, like, scientific experimentation on people. And um, you even have options to, to kill people in here. Which, I mean, okay. It's just that, I don't know. When you're playing a regular board game... Uh, killing like a, a shoot 'em up board game, it doesn't feel so bad killing people. When when you're doing like a storytelling game and you're really in it, I understand how that could feel a little darker, and I think that's why they went with the sixteen and up. So I agree with the sixteen and up rating on this. But you say you think it could go lighter? Yeah, I think twelve and up. So that's gonna be. I think that's gonna be very much a, a personal choice. Like if you're playing it with your kids, you're gonna have to decide on whether mm -hmm. or not you're okay with those themes with your family. The three 90-minute sessions, that seems about right. Yeah. I think they averaged around 90 minutes for us. We had one that went a little longer. We had one that was much shorter. Uh, but it does take about three sessions mm -hmm. to get to get through this. Um, all right. So let's, let's talk about the adventure games. Discover the story. Now, uh, is this all back in order so I could no. grab? No. <laughs> okay. So, well, you've got little... You've got little... Little people to represent your people in in this uh, game. Now the idea, the, the theme of this game is it's kind of like corporate espionage. Mm -hmm. You're hired by a rival corporation to go steal information on this new drug they're developing. That the rival corporation is Monochrome Inc. You're going to steal information on their new drug. I think it was called like Rainbow. Yes, it's called Rainbow. Yeah, and uh, so the way the game goes, if you haven't uh, checked out any of the adventure games games yet, or our other review of the other adventure games, you get a storybook. And you get uh, these room cards that you set out, and um, I'm trying to remember which was the start, the first room a. card. A makes sense. Oh yeah, they're lettered. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Silly me. Okay, let me find that. There we go. All right. So the first room you get into is the lobby of the building, and as you can see here, the lobby of the building has lots of numbers around it. So if you want to explore a number, you go to the number in the adventure book. Then sometimes you get items or uh, for exploring numbers. So for instance, like here is, and this is, I'm going to keep this spoiler free. This is not going to spoil anything. But here is an item that you can find in the game. Item number 65, the light bulb. So you find the light bulb and now you have it in your, in your inventory. And let's say you find a light you want to put it in. You combine the numbers. So this is 65. Whichever number is lower, let's say the light was that 105 there in the first room. You would go 65, 105, and then you'd go to the book. And if you could do it, it'd say, oh, you put the light bulb in the light and the light comes on. And that's basically how you play it. It's, it's a very brilliant system. It makes sure that you never accidentally look at the wrong numbers because... Uh, it has to be a number that you have either available in mm -hmm. the room, available in your inventory, or a combination of the both. And you always put the lower number first. Um, and then there's there's some hints in the in the rule yeah. book for if you're stuck on things. 
But uh, yeah, so the only difference, uh, uh, that's the basic way these adventure games play. The big difference, I think, between this and the dungeon one was just the structure of the building because we were in like a skyscraper and there were elevators and you had to take different elevators mm -hmm. to go to different places and you opened up whole new areas by accessing new elevators. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, it played very similarly to the well, there dungeon. Was, uh, this one had that alarm that would go off oh, yes. when you did certain things. And we, we never got it to the highest alarms. We were setting. very careful. Yeah, but there's like things you could do that would make the alarm level raise. Mm -hmm. And if you got it to like five, you had to immediately read card 999, which I'm guessing is A bad. loose, loose scenario yeah. probably. You probably get caught and arrested. But there are also things that um, would lower it. So in, in like in the dungeon, you had health points. Yeah. Instead of the alarm, basically. Right. And then at certain areas, you could get gain your health back. You could yeah. get healing, so it was yeah. a similar thing, just a different... Different mechanic, yeah. but similar concept. And I would say that it was it was uh, interesting for adding stress in, but also it, it, it was fairly easy to work around. Mm -hmm. um, every character started with something that it was a disability for them that would automatically raise... The score if they did like for me it was facial recognition if i did anything where there was a camera basically mm -hmm. i would raise the alarm level so i just avoided all those and then you were playing with someone who had fingerprint issues where mm -hmm. if you did anything with that required a fingerprint scanner uh your fingerprints were on file and it would raise the alarm mm -hmm. level but then you accidentally triggered something where they put your face in the system and then you <laughs> also would raise the alarm level with the facial recognition yeah. but then we we quickly found the computer to remove both of our images from the system yeah. and then we were okay and, and I'm, I'm not really ruining anything from the story this is just a roundabout explanation of kind of how this went um and oh. then we found how to remove every other disability except for mine. Yeah, we never figured out the, <laughs> how to get the fingerprints out of the system, did we? No. No. Okay, so <laughs> so again, uh, that's kind of how this game plays. You have many endings. That I felt, I think there were even, there were significantly there more were like endings than this. Six endings or something like that. It was like a lot. And th there was a lot of endings. There was a lot of ways to get to each of those endings. There were a lot of wonderful puzzles in this that I thought were really great puzzles that involved multiple rooms, multiple items, trying to figure out how to do something in one room to activate something in another room. Um, it very much played like those old point-click adventure games. Really felt a lot like it, which we've been playing a lot of games that are like that lately and really in enjoying them quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, I liked this better than the dungeon, and I rated the dungeon positively. I'll put a link to uh, the Adventure Games The Dungeon at the end of this video if you want to check out a review of that. Mm -hmm. It's already up. But I liked that one quite a bit. I liked this more. Mm -hmm. What did you think? Yeah, I liked this one more too. It was... It was uh, okay. So some of the themes did feel a little bit adult. There was some... Um, especially with like the human experimentation and stuff. That was a bit grim. Uh, but... It was okay in this style of game to have that kind of grim theme on it. It it uh, it added to the kind of tension you feel with this style of like a board game point click adventure. You know, it's like ooh, we want to be really careful. We don't want to get caught. These bad guys are really bad, and they're gonna do horrible things to us if they mm -hmm. catch us. And I just thought it kind of heightened the it for me it heightened the immersion. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say? Uh, about what? About about that the theme. Oh, uh, well, uh, before we played it, I thought it was going to be boring. Mm. Yeah, the, um, co the cover doesn't do it and justice. And like the the description on the back didn't really sound that thrilling either. But it ended up uh, maybe because I had low expectations, it ended up being a lot more fun. Yeah. Than I was expecting. Well, so when we got both of these, we jumped into the dungeon because both both of us were like, "Yay, fantasy theme." And we were like, okay, that'll be great. But then we played this, and both of us, so we, we just both agreed, both of us like this better than the dungeon. I, I, I think a big part of it goes to the, um, the cover, unfortunately, is not very attention-getting. It doesn't grab you. It's just a picture of a, of a building with a helicopter. Mm -hmm. I think they could have gone with um, something that, that felt a little more spy or espionage, maybe, maybe a close-up of a part of the building and people breaking into it in, like, mm -hmm. ski masks or something. Might have, might have been... Mm -hmm more i don't know no no you wouldn't like that either mm -hmm. oh well but the game itself is great 
The game is very enjoyable. It's very immersive. I love the point-click adventure aspect. The puzzles in this felt very logical to me. I mm -hmm. very much enjoyed them. Um, I we we had a, a positive rating, but I immediately because I figured out in the in the very end of the game, and I'm not going to ruin possible endings, and I'm not going to ruin choices. This is spoiler free. But at the very end, there was like a set of like three options from where we had gone that each one branched out into multiple endings. And I was like, wow, I want to go back and I want to play it again and try a different ending. Of course, you just want to look at the other endings because that's how you always are. Mm -hmm. But but I was like, I want to play this again. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you think? Do you what? Uh, did you feel that way? Yeah, I think it would be um, fun to play it again with one or two other people. Right. To get just, more fresh eyes yeah. on it. Well, because again, there were, there were a lot of item cards we never found. And like I'm not we, sure how we, we missed them. Or we were like carrying around items that we never never figured, figured out what, figured to, do what to do with. So I definitely yeah, with more people because they might they might figure out what to do with mm -hmm. those items or figure out how to find. Like we never found the computer system to get rid of the fingerprints. Someone yeah. else might figure that out. Um, but also also again, I just want to try a different ending. Mm -hmm. I just want to go through it all. And I mean, there's a lot that we know how to solve now. But if you give it time, you'll forget some of that. Yeah. And I just want to go through it again and try to get a different ending. Mm -hmm without giving away what ending we did and, and what possible endings there are. So, yeah, I mean, I, I really enjoyed this quite a bit. Uh, did you have anything else you want to say about the actual gameplay, the theme, or the mechanics of uh, Adventure Games Monochrome Inc.? What do you think? No, I just, uh, I was trying to, I think we only read, like, one hint, if I recall. There was one thing we were kind of stuck Yeah, we, we were... We were pretty good with most of it. We figured out most of it on our own. Yeah. There was there was one. Uh, in fact, actually, I think we we had an easier time figuring out the puzzles in this one, yeah. even though it has a higher age limit uh, than we did in the dungeon. There were yeah. because there were a couple hints we had to read in the dungeon, though we figured out the dungeon just fine and we were mm -hmm. able to get through it. I actually thought I felt like even though the theme was more mature, the the difficulty felt a little lower. Mm -hmm. Um. And uh, dare I say, more enjoyable. Uh, mm -hmm. I actually qu like like. I've already said it a few times, but mm -hmm. I really really liked this one. So, do you want to rate this one first, or shall I? I'll rate it. All right. So, how many stars out of ten do you give to Adventure Games Monochrome Inc.? Seven. Okay. So, what does seven mean for you? Uh, it means I liked it. Okay. And I would play it again. Now that I think seven is the same score you gave to the dungeon which you said you like this better so it's just a little bit better i then? couldn't remember what score i gave the dungeon i'm pretty sure mm -hmm. you had given it a seven so is it just like maybe marginally better than the dungeon then like a little bit yeah okay. i mean i would play the dungeon again too mm -hmm. but if, they're both very positive scores. yeah if, seven's very if good. someone was like oh let's play one of the adventure games i would lean towards this one before the dungeon okay so they're very close yes they're very close in the ratings for you uh, I'm a little bit higher, actually. I like this one um, significantly better than The Dungeon, to the point where I'm going to give it a 7.5. I really enjoyed this quite a bit. I really liked it. Like, I'll play it again right now. I, I It hasn't... We just played it, like, recently, but I would play this again right now. In fact, a couple days ago, we just played it. Mm -hmm. I'd play this again right now and play through all three modules back-to-back -back just to find another ending. That's how much I enjoyed it. So I'm going to give it a 7.5. I thought it was really enjoyable. I would play it anytime somebody asks. This is a game that I, I think and I hope will be coming out on game nights in the future. And then we're going to get to try to find some of the other endings. And I uh, again, unlike the Exit the Game series, I do feel like there's replayability to this. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can play this multiple times and that's great. And this, this one... Um, you know what, if you like adventure games, or you're a big fan of the old point-click adventure games on computers, and now we're getting into more modern board games, or you like storybook games and storytelling games, yeah, this game is really good. I, I would recommend this game to you. If, if any of those things that I just said apply to you, I would recommend trying out Adventure Games Monochrome Inc. What do you think? Who would you recommend it to? Um, people who like the point-click adventure games. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um... People who are trying to get maybe non-gamer friends and family into games because mm -hmm. I, maybe people who like um, 
puzzles, like crossword puzzles, logic puzzles. Oh, because it's very puzzly, yes. Yeah. Oh, good, good. That's a good one. I like that. You know what else I just thought of? If you got non-gamers you're trying to get into it who are really into, like, spy adventure movies. Because this this one was, it was very espionage mm -hmm. you know? Is that a word, espionage or did I just it's, make that up? It's word now. It's word now. That's right. It's in the lexicon. I'm going to coin that. Every time somebody says it, they got to give me a nickel. Okay. So, <laughs> it's espionage <laughs> So there you have it. This is a really fun game. We both really enjoyed it. This is a, a two thumbs up review from us here at the Board Game Captain. Uh, seven stars from Lynn, 7.5 stars from me. Um, and we can recommend Adventure Games Monochrome Inc. to you if you thought anything we talked about during this review sounded interesting and fun to you. So if you enjoyed this review and tutorial and you'd like to see us do more like it, uh, sorry, just review, no real tutorial on this one. If you enjoyed this review and you'd like to see us do more like it, be sure to give it a like. Share it on all forms of social media. If you have any comments or questions or concerns, put, put them in the comments down below. And be sure to subscribe to the Board Game Captain on YouTube. That's Captain spelt with a K. And hit that little bell icon on my channel so you get updates and alerts every time we upload a new video. And until next time, game, game on. on.